Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's kick things off with a story about a visit from Karen at a high-volume Cadillac dealership where she brings chaos from the moment she steps in. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned-on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Karen visited my work yesterday. For context, I work at a high-volume Cadillac dealership that also sells and services Chevrolet. Karen comes into our dealership 10 minutes late for her 4 p.m. oil change and tosses her keys to an advisor while jabbing on her phone loudly. It was a personal call, and the word affair was mentioned, but that's all I got. Two to five minutes later, when I look out of my office, which looks into the customer lounge, Karen has seated herself in a chair, but also pulled another leather chair from the other side of the lounge so she could take off her socks and shoes and put her nasty feet on the other chair. So she was all spread out while gabbing on her phone. She then proceeded to start complaining that she was waiting too long, it had been 15 minutes, and proceeded to walk around the entire dealership barefoot, complaining about the lack of service and the excruciating wait, yada yada. At about 4.45, the advisor comes to her and says her car's all done, but during her courtesy inspection, the tech recommended new shocks, brakes all around, and since she was close to 100,000 miles, routine maintenance items. Karen, barely paying attention as she's focused on the outrageous and disgustingly high cost of her oil change, under 50 US dollars, but when the advisor told her what needed to be done to make her car road safe would be about $1,100, she lost it. She accuses him of trying to take advantage of her because she's an older woman and we were trying to scam her thinking she didn't know anything about vehicles. Well, Karen, you drive a 1999 Buick Lucerne with almost 100,000 miles. The brakes are rusted through and you have metal on metal pads and rotors, so basically no brakes. My tech didn't even want to let it go because they technically aren't street legal in our state at that point. Your shocks are gone, as in not just leaking, but one was just hanging on by a hope and a prayer, and the other was so rusted my tech didn't know how she lost it. Your front driver's side frame is rusted out, so you packed it with a 2x4 and foam spray. God, I wish I had a picture of that. She didn't even get to hear about her totally bald tires. It's safe to say this woman had never done anything other than oil changes on her car, period. She screamed and cussed, demanded the owner. She got the GM and service manager. My poor cashier, who was also being personally attacked at this point, just shut her window and refused to help her anymore. I mean, Karen did call her a pathetic C-word, so I can't blame her. GM and SM are attempting to explain everything to her, but she's refusing to listen. Finally, my SM calls me over, I'm the office manager for sales, service, and warranty, to try a female had to calm her down as she said she now felt threatened. While I hadn't been involved yet, I'd seen her behavior and was almost ready to step out anyway. I simply said, ma'am, you felt comfortable enough here to take your socks and shoes off to rest on our leather chairs. You also felt comfortable enough to walk around our sales floor and service lounge barefoot. If now you're uncomfortable, I'll take care of your oil change today. You have your inspection report with our technician's recommendations, as well as our quote. Now, before I can release your car to you, however, I do need you to sign this waiver that you're taking your vehicle against our advice as we've deemed it unsafe for the road. We consider it a risk to your safety as well as others. In order to protect us from bad customer decisions, we require this. State law allows us to hold your vehicle if we deem it unsafe, Per state law, if you sign this, we cannot hold your vehicle. She signed and called me a stupid effing B. I was condescending to her. Yeah, I totally was. And she couldn't believe she was being treated that way here. And of course, the famous, I'm never coming back. Then she claims she knows the owner. Problem is, the owner's name isn't Peter, nor is his son or any of his grandsons. Looking into her service history here, she's only been in once before, three years ago, for a wiper blade replacement. I wouldn't have released her car to her. She sounds like a menace. I'm sure she peeled out of the parking lot, too. Where's a cop when you need one? And our second story. I haven't worked here for 10 years. Just for some context, I worked in retail at the same store for about 15 years. I was part of the management team when we had our highest ranked manager leave to explore other opportunities. 
She was a young single mother, and the retail management life doesn't afford you as much family time as you might think. Myself, as well as the rest of our team, has to run the store on our own while we waited for her replacement to be trained in another store, which afforded the rest of us with even less family time. So by the time the new manager was able to start, me and the rest of our team were completely burned out, which was not helped much by the fact that our new team member was a real Karen-type personality. She wouldn't do the work, but then would criticize our work for not being done the way she wanted done. As she was higher on the food chain, if she didn't like my work, I had to redo it. So one week into the new queen's reign of terror, I'd had enough. I was done rebuilding the same displays 15 times in a shift, so I walked into the cash office where I knew she would be sitting her fat butt down on the phone with her friend for the fifth time in the two hours she'd been there, handed in my resignation effective immediately, handed in my keys, and walked out. I never felt that free in my life. Fast forward to this past holiday season, I'm out doing some heavy Christmas shopping for the fam. I run into a woman who I recognize as a regular customer who always came in when I was still working there. Also a Karen type, she was that one customer that no one ever wanted to check out, so I often ended up being the one to check her out back in the day, because I was really good at gritting my teeth behind a big smile, some sarcasm, and a can-do attitude. She walks up to me in this day and says, I see you're out of some product that I didn't care to commit to memory, and asks if I will check the back, to which I reply, I'm sorry, I don't work here. I'm clearly not in the company dress code, as I'm wearing a winter coat for starters, but also sweatpants snow boots, and a winter hat, so I figure that'll be the end. Nope, she replied with, you do work here. I know you're either just coming in or shopping on your day off or something, but it's your job to help the customers in this store. Now help me. I said, seriously, ma'am, I don't work here, to which she responds, I know you do. You've checked me out before. I said, yes, I did work here, and I did check out before 10 years ago, and I haven't worked here since 10 years ago. As I'm walking away to move to another aisle, I hear her just whining about how horrible of an employee I am and she's going to see to it that I'm fired. I brush it off and keep shopping. About the time I was starting to forget about the interaction completely, I turn a corner and see Karen, and let's call her Amy, my former subordinate who's the new head manager and a good friend of mine, heading straight towards me. Karen's hands are flailing, still complaining that Amy has a horrible employee and she wants her fired now, which anything short of theft or threat of harm to employees and customers, the order to fire someone has to come from the corporate office. Amy doesn't have that power. When Amy sees who it is Karen's complaining about, she couldn't hold back. She busts up laughing and says, ma'am, I can't fire her because she doesn't work here anymore. And even if she did, she would still be my boss. She then accuses Amy of lying to try and cover up her own ineptitude. She storms off, leaving a cart full of items behind. I took a few minutes to talk to Amy, and I even helped her put Karen's stuff back on the shelf when Amy's called to the office. Apparently, one of their corporate bosses, which we'll call Lisa, whom I also knew from my time working there, was in town for fourth quarter meetings with the staff, and had seen Karen leaving in a huff on her way back from her lunch break, and stopped to see what was wrong and assured her she would get to the bottom of it. As I'm checking out, I can still hear Karen arguing with them that she knows I work here and she'll have us all fired. They ended up having to pull out past employee files and show her my resignation letter dated 10 years earlier before she would finally go away. Last time I spoke to Amy, she said Karen hasn't been back since. That's a frightening level of Karenness. She recognized you after 10 years and still expected you to drop everything you were doing just to help you? Despite telling her time and time again you'd quit a decade prior? And our last story. My HOA definitely plays favorites. We moved into a townhouse condo in a neighborhood in northern Florida. We saw the rules and we said, well, this isn't that bad. It's pretty common rules like no mechanic work on cars and driveways which I do my own oil changes, but do it elsewhere. No super loud music after 10, basic lawn care and garbage day rules, nothing that most of us don't already do anyways. Anyways, we have a single car driveway behind our house that can fit two cars. Most others only fit one car, so we got lucky. My husband goes to work early, and I usually drop my kids at daycare a couple hours later, then go to work. So my husband's car needs to be the last one in. 
He'll get home earlier than me, so he has to rather park out front of the house till I get home or pull out of the driveway for me when I get home. The other day, my hubby was exhausted. He's a painter, so his car was out front on the street and didn't feel like going to pull it around the block, which isn't a big deal. There wasn't any HOA rules saying we can't, and no signs in the street saying we can't park there. Come 3 a.m., I get a loud banging on my door from a neighbor warning me they're about to tow his car. Half asleep, I go out and sure enough, am hooked up to a tow truck with a green slip on the window of his car. On the slip, it's marked Other, and you cannot park here, written in next to it. I paid the unhitch fee and moved his car around. I was upset, but I said I'll deal with it tomorrow and went back to bed. If we had broken the rules, I would have understood. However, my hubby probably did that two times a week for the last six months without any warnings or notifications that HOA rules had been added or changed. In fact, a bunch of people in that street park there every day. There are people who even park in fire lanes and on streets with no parking signs, but nothing ever happens to their cars. There are rules in place that owners must clean their dog crap up, and yet everywhere I go, there's mounds, and I've had to tell people to clean it up out of my lawn. After so many times, I report it to HOA, but does that stop it? Nope. Clearly, our HOA plays favorites and for some reason targeted us for God knows what reason. We're model owners and very clean, quiet, and follow the rules adamantly. It only takes one a-hole to ruin an entire HOA. This is why it needs to be done by the city slash county. A good HOA can turn bad at the drop of a dime, and we as law-abiding citizens shouldn't have to deal with this added stress. This agitates me beyond belief, so much so that we put our house on the market and are looking for a single home outside of an HOA's jurisdiction. Edit. Last night they came to tow my neighbor, same issue. However, I saw it wasn't the towing company that tagged us, and oddly, it's only our street being towed despite the rest of the area having violators. Even skipped over cars on our street. Clearly playing favorites. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.